Good afternoon, everyone. This is attorney Catherine Henry, and I'm doing this Facebook Live to give you an update on House Bill 5672. And since Facebook likes to malfunction, and it's just now telling me on one part that it's going live, I will repeat that first little bit. Um, hi, I'm Catherine Henry, attorney. And I'm doing this Facebook Live to give you an update on House Bill 5672. So I had someone ask me last night at the rally in Grand Rapids about uh, House Bill 5672. Um, several people had been told that it's a great bill, it's good for us, it secures our freedom, it's wonderful, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but this individual was wondering about a particular provision in there. I was even um, told that State Rep Jack O'Malley up north has done Facebook Live videos telling everyone it's a great bill. So I had not seen it. Um, it was something that was introduced on March 17, 2020, and it was um, passed by the House on June 24th. So I want to say that's seven days ago. Um, so it was introduced by, um, well, four state reps, I'll just say. They are the ones sponsoring it. And it goes over some seemingly benign things. There's not like a ton of flashy language that draws attention to it. But um, it's important to note some things. So. First of all, I'm going to draw your attention to the um, language of the description that I shared with you um, in this Facebook Live. Um, the description gives a whole written synopsis. So I give you the key um, language of the actual bill. I quote that. And then in addition to that, I um, give you the description of what that does and what it doesn't do and why it is absolutely horrible and it should not be passed through the Senate. So, um, what I'd like you to do is look at section three and subsection three. So if you're looking at the document that I've linked to that, right in that description that I, um, as part of this Facebook Live post, there's a description there. Um, there's a link right to the legislature's website so you can see exactly the document that I'm seeing. If you look at page 2, line 25, it says that an employer uh, may, as a condition of employment or of keeping a particular position within that firm or um, of receiving additional compensation or benefits, they can require you to comply with a court order that directs you, as an employee, to take action as described in subsection 1. Hmm, that doesn't sound terrible. Court order, got to be right. Subsection 1, no big deal. Well, let's go look at section 3, subsection 1. So section 3, uh, subsection 1 is um, right here. Okay. So this is that part that says, an employer shall not do all these things except for in subsection 3, which is what we just read, right? So it's saying um, that the action items, the items that you can be required to do under subsection 3 are to A, implant or undergo a procedure to implant a device in the employee's or prospective employee's body because that's not invasive at all. B, inject or receive an injection of a device into the employee's body. Yeah, no thanks. Or C, ingest, inhale, or otherwise incorporate a device into the employee's or prospective employee's body. Say what? Okay, so we're talking about implanting, injecting, or ingesting a device into our bodies and that our employer is allowed to make us do that as a condition of employment? 
for the purpose of tracking us. Right, that's not bad. So I'm assuming the state reps who all voted in favor of this and those who are going on the internet and saying that it's a great thing or that it's okay, apparently don't realize that what it says is, yeah, it's only okay if a court orders that to happen. But we saw earlier this year, Kent County courts issuing warrants, essentially, for people under the public health code who had not even been identified yet. DHS worker goes in there and says, I'd like you to give me some, basically some blank warrants because people that are coughing or look like they might be sick on the street could have COVID and I want to be able to lock them up and treat them and test them and, you know, whatever. I gave you guys that um, description of which statutes those involved um, in a couple other videos this, this uh, last couple months. So the judge in that case did that in total violation of the Constitution. I mean, the statute is unconstitutional, but the judge certainly took it in a direction that's totally unconstitutional. And yet, um, here our legislature is saying, no big deal. We'll just trust a judge. Whatever the judge says is totally fine. Then employers will have to, you know, have the ability to make you ingest or inject or implant a device in your body. So <laughs> I wonder if they would have the same philosophy then. If, if judges always get it right, right? If judges always, you know, follow the Constitution, why did the legislature's attorney appeal the Court of Claims decision that came out in their lawsuit against the governor. Yeah, I don't have an answer either. Because clearly they know that judges don't always get it right. And that sometimes statutes, whether um, just entirely on their own or as applied in a particular situation, are unconstitutional. And so if a statute doesn't agree with a constitutional provision, the constitutional provision prevails. It wins, hands down, every time. A statute can never, ever, ever override the Constitution. So, this whole thing is unconstitutional anyway. The whole concept of being forced to implant, ingest, or inject a device into your body as a condition of employment or for any other reason whatsoever. But our legislature has deemed it fit to vote in a majority to pass this through and send it on to the Senate that allows, as long as a court order has said it's okay, then an employer is allowed to require you to inject crap into your body just as a condition of employment. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, so let me get back to, there is another piece that I wanted to share with you about this. Um, so again, for people that are just tuning in, well, that's weird. On this setup, I actually can't see how many people are even on right now. Unusual, okay. Um, Assuming we have more people right now than we did when we first started. I'm talking about House Bill 5672 that I kind of referenced last night. And this is regarding a bill that was introduced on March 17th. Once COVID was already here, but not really entirely. So I'm kind of wondering where this came from. This whole idea didn't generate within a few days time. So interesting. Um, what? What? Oh. Okay. So, and this is something that passed the House in Michigan on June 24th. And we were told by legislatures, leg the legislature, 
It's totally fine. This bill's good. It does good things. It doesn't allow a, an employer to do any of these things to you, except for the part where it does. Okay? So the part where it does is on page two, section three, uh, subsection three, which is on line 25. That's where that starts. And it says that as long as there's a court order involved, an employer can go ahead and make you do what's in subsection one. So then you look up at subsection one, which begins on, well, it technically begins on line nine, but the part they're talking about is line 14 through line 19 and saying that you would be then forced to implant, inject, or ingest a device into your body in order to keep your job. So if that wasn't bad enough, hmm. um, so then you look down at page three, section four, and um, whoopee, subsection one says you can bring, as an employee, you can bring a lawsuit against an employer to enforce that. Okay, sounds great, right? However, um, by the way, that should be considered assault, unwanted physical contact, especially that done by force of any kind or duress. That's assault and battery and it's never okay. It's a crime in Michigan, and it should continue to be a crime. We should not have crimes allowable by law as a condition of employment. But anyway, it gets worse, because now that you have this right to sue your employer for doing this, subsection 2, which is page 3, line 4, talks about that if you're suing them, then the court may do one of the following. So, A, they can award you actual damages, court costs and attorney's fees, and enjoin further violation of this act. Well, enjoin further violation of the act basically says, I'm gonna issue an order that says you have to stop doing what you're doing, okay? So then, that's simplistic enough. Then we're looking at the actual damage and, and court costs and reasonable attorney's fees. So if you have been forced to inject something into your body, let's say it's an employer in one of our hardest hit areas with coronavirus, okay? So you are someone in the city of Detroit, such as the individuals with whom I had the pleasure of speaking uh, last Sunday? Sunday? Doesn't seem right. Seems like it was Friday. Anyway, um, last week. Um, so you live down in Detroit and you um, work at a job. Um, I don't know. Let's pick whichever one. Let's say you work at a grocery store right in downtown Detroit or a Dollar General. Okay. You work at a Dollar General in downtown Detroit and they are worried that. Um, their employees might be, you know, getting into contact with too many people that might have, you know, COVID-19. And so they require all their employees to do this tracking. So you have to ingest, inject, or um, implant a, essentially a tracking device. Um, so you work there and um, you barely make minimum wage and you're not even getting enough hours as it is because of COVID-19 and all the different things going on. Um, either, you know, they might be cutting your hours. Um, you're certainly not getting a raise and it's hard enough for you to make ends meet. And then you're told you have to do this to keep your job and you have four kids at home and they need to be fed and I haven't even looked at the governor's uh, press release information from yesterday to see what the plan is for schools, but I, 
without even looking at it, I can guarantee you she's going to want to put them essentially on modified, um, you know, like presents in schools, reduced number of hours or whatever. So, you know, they're not, you're, you're not getting the resources. We all know that no matter what, even now that we're kind of off of lockdown, you're not getting, um, any of, you know, the normal amount of resources that you could and would have been receiving prior to March 13th. So at any rate, times are tough. You're struggling as it is. You work in, you live in downtown Detroit. You work at a Dollar General down there and you're told you have to have this device implanted into your body to keep your job. Otherwise you won't have enough money to feed your four children or whoever is in your family. And so you go and do that. And then you decide you want to sue them because it's not okay for them to do that to you. So you go to sue them and let's say, you know, you win. Let's say there wasn't even a court order allowing them to do that. So you go and, and you win. Um, this law says you get court costs. Okay, so I honestly haven't looked at the last time uh, what a court cost um, filing fee is and, and I don't know. Let's say you're going to sue in district court and um, it's a filing fee of $150. It's remotely somewhere in there. Okay, so you'd get your $150 back and let's say you hired an attorney and the attorney costs $5,000 to sue. Um, okay, so you would get your $5,000, you would get your $150 back. Okay, so that puts you at break even, right? Then you get actual damages, actual damages. So let's say in our scenario that at the time that you're suing, you don't have any um, medical bills at this point. Um, you still have your job. Okay, so what are the actual damages that you get to sue them for? Hmm. Actual damages literally means, actually, you know what, Ashley, can you hand me the Black's Law Dictionary? Actual damages literally means that you and or your attorney have to show what money you're out of pocket because this went down. Thank you. So I'm probably going to look in the right, wrong spot. It's going to be under damages if I look under actual. It's going to be under actual if I look under damages. So oh, look at that. See damages. <laughs> I knew that would happen. And guys, I have a raging headache right now, so I'm a little crabbier than normal. And I'm really ticked off at all these legislators that think this crap is okay. I've had enough. It's stupid. And they need to learn how to read the Constitution because they took an oath to uphold it. So I'm going to be a little snappy today. Being fed up with the ridiculousness and then having this raging headache. And knowing that my birthday is in two days and I'm going to be sitting here counting hundreds of thousands of signatures. Which I'm grateful for having. But kind of bummed. So wanted one day off. I, did, I had to work all day on Mother's Day and Father's Day. So it's kind of hoping for my birthday. Um, damages. I can't spell damages anymore. Can't do two things at once. This is great. Okay, guys, I'm almost there. Damages. Oh, boy. Actual. There we go. Okay. So this is the definition in the Black's Law Dictionary. Actual damages, an amount awarded to a complainant to compensate for a proven injury or loss. In other words, damages that repay actual losses. So if you don't have a medical bill, if you weren't even out of work for any given time, if you, if you did this so you didn't lose your job, I'm not sure how you would be awarded anything other than your court costs and attorney's fees. So what do you get as the person whose bodily integrity was violated? 
One second, guys. Frank, can you help them? <laughs> Thank you. Um, seeing out of my corner of my eye that we have uh, people working on our validation for our petitions um, who needed help. Okay, actually, no, I'm going to keep that because I'm going to make a point on something here. So my point is limiting people, limiting this employee in this, in this example or in any scenario. This is, again, this is assuming there is not even a court order that would be unconstitutional anyway. This is just saying if, the, if an employer without any kind of court order is trying to force you to get an injection of a device into your body, you can sue them, but you have to prove actual damages, which means you not only have to prove that they have done this horrible, egregious thing to you, you then have to prove every penny that you're suing them for and that that action directly led to the loss of, of those pennies out of your pocket. So what I said in my little written summary um, that you guys can see um, is that it should be, if anything, first of all, the whole part, the whole subsection three on page two, subsection three needs to come out of there. There is no way that the legislature should be supporting any judge ordering an individual to have to inject a device into their body. I don't care who you are. If you want to argue with me on that one, you better do it to my face in public. Because that is ridiculous. I don't think anyone in any political party, whether you're serving an office or not, would think that they'd be okay themselves with having a court tell them you have to inject a device into your body. So what I said in here is that um, we got to take that whole part out, right? That no court can order that. But on top of that, if you're going to be able to sue about it, actual damages is literally saying in, in many situations, you get nothing. You literally get nothing. You get to break even for injecting a device into your body. Right. No, it should be punitive damages. It should be statutory damages. So let's go over what the definition of punitive damages is. And by the way, I didn't look this stuff up before I did this video. This is just stuff that everyone who is a practicing attorney and should know the laws should know. Definitely everyone who's voting on our laws and drafting them should know. If you don't know what punitive or statutory damages is, you shouldn't be writing a law or voting on a law that talks about actual damages, excluding punitive and statutory damages. Period. Again, I don't care what political party you're a part of. I don't care if you're the Speaker of the House or if you're a freshman representative from Nowheresville, Michigan. Doesn't matter. I don't care if you're a farmer by trade or an attorney or a doctor or a dentist or a teacher. If you don't understand what actual and punitive and statutory damages are, you should not be drafting a bill or voting on a bill that talks about any of those or implicates or excludes any of those. So punitive damages. Damages awarded in addition to actual damages when the defendant acted with recklessness, malice, blah, 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 or damages assessed by way of penalizing the wrongdoer or making an example to others. Punitive damages, which are intended to punish and thereby deter blameworthy conduct, are generally not recoverable in a breach of contract. Yeah, we're not talking about that. Um, okay, so again, this is uh, just in the um, Black's Law Dictionary, it's telling us that the Supreme Court of the United States has um, basically come up with three guidelines to help determine whether punitive damages awards violate um, constitutional due process rights against, in this case, the employer who would have to pay them. Number one, they would look at the reprehensibility of the conduct being punished. 
I uh, think it's pretty darn reprehensible that somebody would force another human being to inject something into their body as a condition of employment. I don't need a case law to tell me that. That one's obvious. Uh, number two, the reasonableness of the relationship between the harm and the award. So um, if somebody is forcing you to inject something into your body to keep your job at the Dollar General in downtown Detroit so that you can pay your bills and feed your kids and you're suing them because of that, I would think, I don't know, what is the human body worth? God made it. Um, that's really hard to put a number on. Would it be 10 million? 50 million? 1 billion? I don't know. I'd say at least 20, 20 million dollars. How about that? Does Dollar General want to pay 20 million dollars? I think that'd be reasonable because again, the whole point is to penalize the wrongdoer and make an example out of them so no one else does this. Um, the third point that the Supreme Court has apparently talked about is the difference between the award and the civil penalties authorized in comparable cases. So, quite honestly, I don't know what really off the top of my head applies to having to inject into your body a device. Well, actually, I do, but that's a topic for a whole other discussion. So, uh, Carol and Connie and... Um, Maya and Kristen Megan uh, and even the guy I think I heard speaking at the um, Grand Rapids rally last night. Um, anybody who knows what, uh, oh shoot, I forgot the second half. Um, anybody who can go to my um, Facebook page and look at my, what is that called, banner? Pinwheels for vaccine injury awareness. Anybody who understands what that is, what it's all about, you understand why that topic of conversation is a little bit bigger and more analogous to what we're talking about. But um, outside of that, there's not a whole heck of a lot that really is analogous to this situation. So keep in mind, Damages, punitive damages, is to set an example of the person who did this egregious harm. And it is to compensate the person for having to endure this on top of the actual damages that they've incurred out of pocket. And it's meant to um, make an example out of them, be an award that is big enough and, and you know, inconvenient enough and, and bankrupting enough that every other business looks at that and goes, oh my gosh, we cannot be in that kind of trouble. We don't want an award like that against us. I guess we're not going to do that to our employees. So that's that one. Um, statutory damages. Again, Black's, Black's Law Dictionary says damages provided by statute, such as in a wrongful death and survival statute. Um, and they are distinguished from damages provided under common law. So essentially what it means is the law could put into place, and we do in a variety of situations. Unfortunately, I can't think of any of them off the top of my head. I don't know if you, one of you guys wants to do a quick Google search in, for Michigan statutory damages. Um, but essentially, it's when the legislature has, in creating the law, said, if you, you know, people don't have a right to do this to other people. If you do do this to somebody else, they can sue you and you will owe them at least X amount. $20,000. $10,000. Well, it's going to be different in every scenario. So person damaged by either or both of the following may recover three times the amount of actual damages sustained plus costs and reasonable attorney fees. What? Related to stealing, embezzling, buy, uh, buying, receiving, or possessing, concealing, stolen or embezzled okay. goods. So there's an example. I, I was kind of hoping for a dollar amount, but um, there's, there's, yeah, that's not a dollar amount though. 
Um, so typically it's a dollar amount, but the example that was just given to me was um, if somebody is caught embezzling from you and you're suing them, that you have the opportunity to sue them for three times the amount of your actual out-of-pocket expenses because that is meant to, um, the, the, the legislature in enacting that statute said, that's actually really a, a truer picture of what a person is out when they endure such a situation. Um, so in my mind, I don't know about you, but that is a clear example of how actual damages, which in this example would give someone a zero, uh, is totally insufficient and limiting in every possible way. And how statutory and um, punitive damages should be put into this bill uh, before it ever thinks about getting passed by the Senate. So if I were you, I would call your state rep and, well, I would look up their vote on this bill and I would say, if they voted in favor of it, I would say, what are you thinking? Do you want to be injected with a device into your body? What if the state legislature required you to inject a device into your body just to keep your job? How do you feel about that? I'd ask them that and record it. Ask them on Facebook, ask them an email, ask them in text messages and on the phone. Go to their summer fundraising events, you know, the local whatever, GOP barbecue or the Democrat whatever, right? You go, you see them in person, and you ask them those questions and you record it. Um, so I'd also want to know um, why they think actual damages would be sufficient to cover what somebody has really endured when an employer has forced this kind of thing upon them. Then if I were you, I would call your state senator. Might as well also call Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky. And you let them know that under no circumstances is it okay for them to pass this bill because it's absurd. And ask them the same question I told you to ask of your state rep. Would you want, as a condition of employment with the legislature, to have to inject or ingest or implant a device into your body? And then ask them the follow-up question. Okay, so if your employer tries to force you to do that, why do you think actual damages would be sufficient in this situation instead of punitive damages and statutory damages on top of the actual damages. And then for all of those individuals, you should probably ask them, how in the world does it make any difference if some judge somewhere has said, it's okay, you can go ahead and force an individual to implant a device into their body how would that be okay merely because a judge said it when clearly the Constitution does not ever give the government a right to do something that egregious? So ask them both that. Um, so I'm going to try to figure out if I have questions on this. Are you going to see if you can help me on that? Okay. Oh, yeah, it doesn't show me anything. Comment, exactly, my buddy rejected stainless steel piercings. Not related. Somebody made a comment listening to Jack O'Malley. They have no idea what this bill actually means. They believe it's good. References to Nazi Germany and forcing people to do things against their will. Somebody suggested we call all the legislators publicly. Name by name. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If somebody wants to um, look up that list um, and, you know, which ones actually voted for this. And then if you even wanted to do one step further, if you wanted to see which senators 
are supposedly sounding like they're in favor of this bill or it looks like they might be in favor of this bill and you want to send me that list, I'll totally do a Facebook Live talking about it and I'll tag as many of them as I'm friends with on Facebook and we can share it all over because they know that you're watching and so they're watching and so a lot of other people are watching so it, it'd be great. We'll put it on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. We're up to 128 viewers. Um, you're also told no need to apologize for your kindness. It's completely understandable. You're awesome, and thank you for all you're doing. Well, that was a lot of that was very quick. Can you say it a little slightly slower? Don't apologize for being crabby. You're oh. awesome. Thank you for all you're doing. Oh, thank you. Uh, question: What employer or special interest group pushed for this nonsense? Oh, also something that if any one of you wants to research which special interest group might have been the ones um, pushing this. Uh, I'll be glad to talk about it if I can see the actual hard evidence in hand. Um, uh, something I did see a, a second ago, I, it doesn't let me scroll back to see older things, but something I did see a second ago is why on earth would they be pushing for this or doing anything with this back on March 17th? 17th before much of the information even came out about COVID-19? And that is very good question. Seriously, love that question. Um, this is worse than communism. Robert Van Lente, are, have you lost your damn mind? It looks to me that there is consideration in exchange for accepting the chip. What are you missing? Your common sense the ability to read the Constitution of the United States as well as the Constitution of the state of Michigan among everything else. Are you serious? So it's okay someone would be able to tell you that to work anywhere or do anything that you have to be able to inject something into your body? You have to have a device implanted into your body and that's okay because there's consideration? Right. Wouldn't that be the same as a tattoo during World War II? So, indentured servitude earlier on, that was okay? What about slavery? I mean, because slaves were typically fed and, and given a place to live and clothes, right? So, obviously that was okay. Rep. Aaron Miller just joined. Are you... Let me know if Robert Van Lente decides that he's going to say anything else about this or if he's realized how far out of his league on this he is. You've got to be kidding me. Say that in public and allow people to ask you about it. There's no way you would ever agree to have your body implanted with a device just so you can simply earn a living to pay your bills. And if you're okay with that, move to a socialist country and get out of mine. There's got to be another question on here. Lots of comments uh, supporting you and comparisons to Nazi Germany. That it is comparable to Nazi Germany. So, Robert Van Lente, I'm so glad that you have officially crossed over so far to the other side that you are akin to a Nazi. Congratulations. Comments about the state installing COVID tracking on our phones without consent. Question, who are we emailing? Who are you emailing? You should email your state rep. You should email your legislator. I would ask you to look up ahead of time if your um, state you know, if your state rep voted in favor of it or voted against it, because if your state rep voted against it, you need to be writing them to say thank you for having common sense. Thank you for having the ability to read the U.S. Constitution. Thank you for understanding that God created us to have our own bodily integrity and that the government has no freaking right to do anything to inject us with a device. 
Um, if, however, your state rep voted in favor of it, your letter or your email needs to be entirely different than that. Um, Likewise, your senator might have something on their page. They often do press releases um, on their the legislature's official website. You click on your own um, senator's website, and um, they will have often press releases about specific topics. So you'll be able to see, um, there's a good chance, you might be able to see what their stance is on this particular issue. And they said, where do we get the list of who voted? I'm looking up right now, so. Yeah, guys, no question. No question is dumb. I am so sick and tired of every single one of these legislators and other government officials or um, local party hacks that think that the people have no right to understand the law and uh, understand their rights under the Constitution and um, that we shouldn't be having uh, discussions in public and understanding which, what each of these bills are doing. So by all means if you have questions don't ever hesitate to ask me them for fear of thinking you're going to look dumb i'm here to answer your questions i give up all the paid cases that i could be getting but for the one that's a constitutional second amendment case um every other case in the last three months i have said nope i can't take that right now because i need to handle this bigger issue and that is because you the people of the state of michigan deserve answers. You deserve someone fighting for you. You deserve someone who believes that you have the ability to read the law and the Constitution, to understand it, and that if you don't, if the majority of you don't understand it, it's not your fault. It's the legislature's fault, and it's legislative council's fault, and it's the whole stinking system's fault, and we're going to bring it down. If you want to join me in bringing it down, Please don't forget to sign our constitutional amendment petition for the Restore Freedom Initiative because we are putting freedom on the ballot for November 3rd, 2020. And I will be turning in all of these signatures by Monday, July 6th, just a few days away. So if you haven't signed it yet and you would like to sign it now because you want to make sure this kind of crap does not happen, please reach out to RestoreFreedomMI.com so that you can look at the Where to Sign tab and figure out where you can sign at a place closest to you feel like, oh, dang it, they're going so fast I can't see them. According to legislature, there was a roll call vote, 299 yeas, 104 nays, two excused, and three not voting. How many yeses? Roll call number 299, yeas, 104, nays, two, not voting, three. How many did you say voted in... Oh, guys, you're not going to like this. Oh, you're not going to like this. Because if you're a Republican or a Democrat, uh, or if your state rep is a Republican or a Democrat, <laughs> you're not going to like what they did. Because, where is this? Um, where do you see that? Where were you just reading from? Oh, right there. But where, where's, it's got to be, the vote has to be here somewhere. Oh, dang it. We got to find what the... Okay, so here's here's the thing, guys. Um, this was voted on on June 24th, passed in the House, and there were 104, 104 legislators that voted yes to this thing. 104! Two voted no. Two. And three didn't vote on it. Two voted no. I want to know who those two are. Let me get their house notes. Yes, please. Oh my gosh. A hundred and four of you? <laughs> we were starting to not be much of friends before now, but clearly we're not going to be friends now. 
I'm writing myself a note. I've been waiting to eat my lunch until after I did this research and did this video. I'm glad I did because, holy crap, this is way more important than eating my first meal of the day. 104. Oh. You know what? Where's all my tech people? Because this is going to take more than one or two or three. All my tech people out there. Brian Bodie, Dana O'Dell, my dad. Um, I'm forgetting tons of you that I know that have these skills. Any of you tech people, there's got to be a way that we can create a database, tie it to the Restore Freedom website, and it is going to help us funnel into there what bills are out there, what bills are introduced, what bills are being voted on. And I can put some summaries in there. It could be easily searchable. And people can have those quick um, action item buttons like Americans for Prosperity or any number of other organizations when they have a bill that they want their members to act on and they send you an email and they say, this is super scary, look at what's in here. If you agree that it's awful, uh, hit this button, it'll you know, open this uh, um, you know, other window so you can immediately have a, a, an email populated to them or whatever. Um, often they'll have a link for the phone call so you can call them. Um, we need to do that, a database specifically for that that's not just about medical freedom. It's not just about Second Amendment rights. It's not just about, um, you know, financial freedom, economic freedom, right? Um, it's about anything that the Constitution does not allow. Who's with me on that? Who is one of my tech people? with that expertise that is willing to join in on that effort so we can create some sort of database on there so that we can get the message out to people in a timely fashion about all this garbage and begin to stop it once and for all. Two no's, S. Johnson and LaFave. All right, Bo LaFave. And Steve Johnson were the no votes. Steve, I know, I know you and I had that uh, disagreement recently on the phone about my amendment. Although you, um, you know, things turned out okay uh, in our conversation. There's your 104. Well, I know how all the other ones are. Right. Wait, well, who's the three? Who's the three they that list the three in the journal? Okay, fine. Give me that back. Dang it. Okay. But I tell you what, Steve, I give you kudos. I don't know why you didn't vote for this. I'm sure you posted on Facebook and I just haven't seen it because so far my understanding is that you have explained every single one of your votes on Facebook so that every single person in the entire world, let alone in your district, can see your reasoning for doing so. And I appreciate that. Whether I agree with you or not on a vote, I that is somebody who's got at least the integrity to be accountable to the people in that regard. So um, those of you who don't know Steve, uh, State Rep Steve Johnson, please take a look at his Facebook page because um, that is an example of the very kind of government transparency and accountability that we need. So back on topic, when it comes to, oh, thank you. When it comes to um, this vote, so Steve Johnson and Bola Fave are the two state reps, the only two state reps that voted no on this heinous bill. Here's what I would like. Those of you state reps that I know are either watching it now or will watch it in the future, I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to assume that you have the best of intentions. I'm going to assume that you want what's best for the people of your district. So I'm going to ask you that if you 
did not read this whole bill word for word in its entirety and ensure that you understood it on your own level of understanding before voting on it, I'm going to ask that you just come out and say that. Say that. Say, you know what? I am now realizing why it is so important that we read every single word of these bills before we vote on them. And I didn't read it. I voted on it. You know, whatever. If you voted in favor of it because you read it, you actually might have thought it was not so great. But then legislative council told you, no, this is totally great. You should vote in favor of it. It's no big deal. Nothing bad at all. If that's why you voted in favor of it, please tell us that too. We need to expose the truth for what it is. And we vote each of you into office to represent us and to do the right thing. That includes reading the bills. That includes a variety of other things because you're getting a big paycheck to do so. But even if you got $5 a month for being state rep, guess what? You put yourself in that position. You're choosing to represent the people. And when you get sworn in, you are swearing to uphold the U.S. and Michigan constitutions, regardless of political affiliation, regardless of how you feel on a particular issue. You are swearing to uphold the U.S. and Michigan constitutions, period. Well, I guess if I have your computer, you're not helping me see what questions there are. Crap. You want to call out the 104? Or okay, so here's what I'm going to do right now, because this has been almost an hour and I'm still hungry. Um, I'm going to tell you the 104 state reps that voted in favor of this bill. 104 state reps that think it's okay for a court to order you to implant or ingest um, a device into your body as a condition of employment. The 104 people who voted in favor of, even if a court does not issue such an order, and an employer just goes out and requires you to do something like that as a condition of employment anyway, these 104 state reps said, yeah, but we're going to limit you to actual damages and attorney's fees and court costs. We're going to make it so that you're like financially just even, right? Your break even. No punitive damages. No statutory damages because they don't think it's bad. It's no big deal at all. These are the 104 people that voted that way, okay? Lynn Affendoulis, who is running for Congress in District 3. Guys, you better vote for Tom Norton, I guess, because there's no way that person should be in Congress voting on things at an even bigger scale when she can't follow the Constitution on such an important issue such as this. Tom Albert, dude. I don't, I don't know what to say because so far you won the race when we ran against each other in 2015, 2016. But so far you had voted, uh, how do I want to say this? Good? Like, your, your votes had been decent is what I was understanding uh, in terms of freedom issues. In terms of following the Constitution. Julie Alexander, I just saw you. I mean, I didn't actually see you up close. We were both speaking at the same uh, freedom rally for my petition on, um, what day was that? Monday? What day is it today? I have no idea. Monday. I went to, yeah, I went to Jackson like two days ago, maybe Monday. Monday. Um, was that Jackson? Is that where I was? I think it was in Jackson. Yeah. But seriously, Julie, I met you in September of 2015, sat down with you at a table at the breakfast of the Michigan uh, Republican Leadership Conference, uh, that last day of the conference, and. I really enjoy getting to know you. Why would you vote for this? That can't, that Alor, that can't be who I'm thinking it is. That's not, that's not Tom. No, that can't be. Anthony, Bellino, Burt, Ryan, Ryan Berman. 
You are insanely intelligent. You're an attorney. You're a freedom fighter. What is this bill about? Bolden, Bolin, Bran, Tommy Bran. You said to me earlier this two months ago when I called you up and I asked about your restaurant's opening and you said, oh, no, I can't because there's an executive order and I don't like to break the rules. Okay, the number one rule in this whole country is the Constitution. If you're not following the Constitution, then nothing else beyond that matters. You can follow some lo local rule, ordinance, statute, executive order, but if it violates the Constitution, then you've broken the biggest rule of all. Brixie, Bird, Kelly. Carter, Carter, Cabenzi, I don't even know who that one is. Camillary, Chatfield, Speaker of the House voted in favor of this, guys. Cherry, Churkin, Ellison, Farrington, Filler, Frederick, Garrett, Garza, Gay Dagnago, I'm probably mispronouncing that. Glenn, Annette, you have been a freedom fighter. What happened on this? Green. Greg, or Greg, or whatever. Well, she's a Democrat, so probably would vote for this. Griffin, Guerra, Hadzma, Hall. I am not pronouncing a lot of these names right. Well, basically, there's a very good statistical chance that your state rep voted in favor of this. Ham Hamad, Hawk, Hernandez, Shane Hernandez. You voted for this? Hertel, Holdley, Hoytenga, Michelle, it was bad enough when you said that you had to vote in favor of the extension on April 7th because, and then you had your series of excuses as to why you had to vote in favor of the extension. But this, the Legislative Council obviously gave you bad advice back then. They're still giving you bad advice now. Inman, C. Johnson, I don't know who that is off the top of my head. It's not Steve Johnson, Steve voted no. C. Johnson, Jones, Kale, Kennedy, Colzar, Koopa, Legrand, Lisinski, Luth, Luth? Eric Yeah, that name, if you heard him. Liberati. Leitner, Lily, Lily, um, it locked me out. Jim, Lily, seriously, Lauer, Lauer, Maddock, Matt Maddock. Michigan Conservative Coalition voting in favor of employers al being allowed to have you injected with a device simply because there's a court order. And if they don't have the court order, that's okay. They're only going to be responsible for your out of pocket costs. Oh. Manoigan, Markinen, Meerman, Luke. Listen, Luke Meerman, and quite frankly, any other state rep or senator, if you have any doubt or question at all on your own reading of a bill, whether something is constitutional or not, you can call me or text me anytime, and I will talk you through whatever the issue is. Take me up on it, please. Please. This kind of stuff is not okay. Miller. 
no one. You're a freedom fighter. What happened, man? He's watching. Man. Mueller. Rabbi. Riley. Rendon. Savo. Schroeder. Shannon. Shepard. Well, the last time I talked to Representative Shepard was when he didn't like that I was calling out Bill 5709, which talked about when you violate an executive order, what the penalties would be. And in the initial language as introduced, it had a $5,000 penalty in there. It was taken out, but the language that should have gone in did not. Well, I'm sure we'll disagree on this one then, too. Slay, Sneller, Sowerby, Stone, Tate, Ben Single, Ben Workham, Valpel, Wakeman, Warren, Weber, Wenzel, Wentworth. Sorry, I have a touch screen and I was handed a computer that is not a touch screen. Takes me, whoa, crap. Dang it. Is this the right bill? I got it. I scrolled way too far. There are more people. I'll read them to you. It's control F is still on. Uh, just hit enter. Find one more. Okay, here we go. Oh, Clemente. Cole? Tristan Cole? Come on. Coleman, Crawford, Eisen, Elder, Hood, Hope, Hornberger. Hornberger. Voted in favor of this? Howell. Isenga, Iden, Neely, O'Malley. I mean, we know Jack O'Malley is in favor of this because he does his Facebook Live videos that people tell me about, and he was saying it's a great thing, which it's not. Pagan, Paquette, Peterson, Pahutsky? Mary Whiteford. Wittenberg, Whitwer, Wozniak, Yancey, Yarok. Can you um, tell me if there's any questions that I've been missing? Those, all the names I just read are the people that voted in favor of this insanity. Please reach out to your state rep and tell them, unless, if your state rep is Bo Lefebvre or Steve Johnson, you email them and you tell them, thank you for fighting for freedom. You tell them, thank you for their vote on House Bill 5672. If your state rep is anybody else, you email them and you call them and you blow up their Facebook and Twitter and social media accounts and you say, what were you thinking? Because, by the way, when you, you know, sworn in, uh, into office, you took an oath to uphold the U.S. and Michigan constitutions. Teresa said, did Rachel Hood not vote? Hood voted yes. Hood voted yes. Comment throughout the entire government and start over. Why did they vote yes? Why did they vote yes? That's what we need to ask them. Call them out. Don't let them get away with not answering on that. <laughs> no idea what's going on. You're just saying people's names. They joined the league. Okay. All the names that I just said are people that voted in favor of you being uh, forced to have a device implanted into your body as a condition of employment as long as the judge says it's okay, or if a judge didn't say it's okay, well, then you can't really sue for much for damages. You just get what you're out of pocket. Disappointment. Somebody thought was hoping Tommy Brand didn't vote for it, but it did. We 
we are just as responsible for sleeping on the job as we are holding our uh, representatives accountable. Okay, so somebody says, I thought it read that it prohibits employers from requiring chips. That's part of it. But um, I'm assuming you must have joined us a little late. So I'm going to direct you. Oh, that's lovely. I'm going to direct you to um, page two of the bill. So in my, um, in my description of this video, um, I have a link. I have a description. I have some of the very language quoted from the bill. And then I also have a link so you can follow along directly with the legislature's version of it. So it's not stuff I'm making up. Um, page two, section three, subsection three, line 25 is where it gets into, well, as long as there's a court order that requires or directs an employee to inject their body with such a device, it's okay for an employer to say it's a condition of employment. Then if you go to page three, section four um, talks about, well, even if you don't have a court order and you're the employee and you want to sue your employer for requiring you to do that just to keep your job, you have to inject something into your body just to keep your job. Section four says, yeah, but you're limited to actual damages, which literally means you, as the person who is suffering that, has to prove the case. Then you have to go to the stage of proving how much money you are out of pocket. If you essentially cannot prove every, account for every single penny, then you don't get to have any kind of damages awarded to you. The only things you would get is your court costs and your attorney's fees, which don't really go to you, do they? They just, it's a break even situation for you. For having to inject something into your body just to keep your job. Um, there is a question of when the Senate will vote on this. Um, if one of you guys... It is referred to the Economic and Small Business Development, so if it doesn't get out of committee, the Senate won't vote on it. They need to bury it in the committee. You need to tell, what committee is it in? The Economic and Small Business Development Committee. It is in the Economic and Small Business Development Committee of the State Senate. We need to make sure this bill never gets out of committee so it doesn't get to the floor for a vote. It's in the Economic and Small Business Debe <laughs> Development committee. committee. It was transferred to that committee on June 25th. So it was transferred to that committee on June 25th. You need to call your state senators. You need to call everyone that serves on that committee. And you need to tell them, keep this bill buried in committee. Let Make sure that it dies in committee. Because this kind of garbage should never make it to a yes vote from anyone. They all swore an oath to uphold the U.S. and Michigan constitutions, regardless of what party they're from. Are there any other questions? Uh, did Justin Amash vote for this? Justin Amash is not in a state rep position. He is uh, in our U.S. He's our U.S. representative, uh, at least in District Three. I'm not in District Three anymore, but he used to be my my um, congressman. Um, so he didn't vote either way on this because that's not. It's it wasn't up in Congress. It was at our state legislature. No other questions? Uh, actually, where is where can they read the bill? I have the link right now if you'd like me to post that in the chat. Um, the bill? Or the House Journal with all the information. Like what you were seeing? Mm -hmm. Oh, what, did you post it? Tell them what page that you're on, though. And tell me what page so I can tell them. Uh, starts on 1,220, ends on 1,221. Okay, so there's a link that Frank just posted in the, oh, I realized, <laughs> like, on top of my head. Uh, Frank just posted the link to the, um, the journal, the House journal on this, so you could see every single state rep that voted for it. It begins on page 1,220 and continues on to page 1,221. Keep in mind that it's like a table that was kind of pasted in, and so it starts alphabetically and then it goes down, but it doesn't go um, on the one page and then continue onto the next page like that. Um, so you actually have to look at both pages 
and see how the A, Bs, and Cs, and then the Cs continue actually on the next page. And then you have to go back up to page 1,220 to see the, the alphabet continue. So um, it might look a little confusing when you're looking at it that way. Uh, another question of who do we find out who is on that committee? I am posting the link to that as well. All right, Frank is posting the link in the comments here to who is on the committee in the Senate that you need to call, email, text, Facebook, uh, get them on Twitter and, and uh, Instagram and Snapchat or whatever, TikTok, whatever kind of crap is out there these days. Clearly, I don't have time for Facebook hardly, let alone all that stuff. But um, the people that he just posted the link for are on the committee in the Senate, and they need to be told, bury this thing, do not vote it out of committee. Do not vote it out of committee. Let it die in committee in the Senate. In fact, make sure you copy uh, Mike Shirky, Senate Majority Leader, on that as well. I have uh, Shirky's email if you want to read that. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Slay did vote in favor of this bill. Bradley Slay, yes, he did. Senator Shirky, send S E N, send M Shirky at Senate.Michigan.gov. Yeah, I'm not catching that. Hold on a second. I was just reading this. Um, I'll post it in there too. Okay, he's going to post, um, Frank is going to post the um, email address for the Senate Majority Leader, Mike Shirky. Um, okay, how do you find out who your own state rep is? Michigan.gov forward slash vote. Well, but it should be in there too. I'm pretty sure there's a link to it. I'll find that. Okay. But the Michigan.gov tells you who all of your representatives are. Okay. Well, fine. Can you double check that the link actually works in that regard, and then we'll post it. When does the Senate vote? I don't know, but we need to keep it out of the main Senate floor. We need to keep it in committee and let it die in committee. Uh, when the committee would decide whether to take action or not, I don't know off the top of my head. Oh, and it looks like Nicole already posted a link to how to find your state rep, but what um, Frank is working on is the link that will not only give you your state rep, it'll give you your senator, it'll give you um, state, federal, local, your county commissioners, your local, all of it. Did you post it already? I'm making sure the link works. Okay. It'll be in there before the end of this. And it looks like um, someone said, um, do you think they didn't realize what they actually voted for? And then somebody basically commented on the, the mini description that's given. If a state rep didn't know what they voted for because they just read the description and they didn't read the whole bill, number one, I'd, I'd ra I would respect someone who can own up to that and say, yeah, you know what? I did that. I voted for that. I, I didn't honestly think there could be something this horrible in this bill. I just wasn't paying careful attention and I voted in favor of it. But if I could do it all over again, I would absolutely vote against it. If somebody can do that and stand up and do the right thing, I mean, we all make mistakes. If you can own it and learn from it and do your best to remedy the situation, I'm all for that. I'm really hoping that my conservative friends that I was really surprised at their votes on this, that they're going to, um, they're going to do that. I am posting the link. It'll show you everything from federal down to county level. Um, but if someone is going to say, well, yeah, I didn't really know. I didn't know that was in there. And then kind of leave it at that. Like, well, it's not my fault. It is your fault. Whether you own it is whether you, you know, have garnered respect for your choices, but it is your fault if you voted in favor of this. Absolutely. You can read this bill at the link that is in the, the description of this, 
Um, it's I have the concerning portions actually quoted, but then at the bottom of that is the actual link to go to the legislature's website and see this as a PDF. You can print it off. You can keep it and save it. Um, Ashley got me a list of everybody that's on the committee, their email addresses. That's also being posted. Yeah. Okay. So I have... I have a rock star team sitting in this room with me right now because they also are, um, Frank is posting the list that Ashley found that has um, who all the senators are on that committee. So everyone watching this can contact those senators to tell them to let this bill die in committee. And I'll tell you guys, if you state reps that voted in favor of this, if you're watching this now or you know in a short period of time from now, and you um, realize that you made a huge mistake on this, then join me in the cause and contact the committee members in the Senate and tell them, yeah, it's not what I thought it was. Don't vote for it. It's awful. You do a Facebook Live video like that, I'll share it far and wide. That would be extremely respectable in my book if you could realize what actually you voted on and be able to own it and do your best to remedy it and, and fix the situation. You can reach out to me in an email and say that if you want, and I will blast it all over social media. I'll do a Facebook Live video. I can get on any number of podcasts and radio shows all across the state. Definitely, if you realize now, as a state rep who voted in favor of this, that you made a mistake and you'd like to help try to fix it, come on board. I'll help you with that. Email me your statement. Text it to me. Many of you have my phone number. Um, send me a message. Well, don't send me a message on Facebook because I don't have Facebook Messenger. Um, you could try to send me a message on Twitter, but I, it, that tends to not work that great either. So Victoria Porter said, I just saw an article that says it was passed to make it voluntary, not mandatory, but she believes you, not them. I would ask for the link to that article. Yeah, if anyone has the link to the article that said that this bill, um, <laughs> um, someone says feed that girl, Mike. My husband's not here. He's at work. Um, He's watching, though. Mike is watching? Mm -hmm. Okay, Mike, <laughs> you should have had lunch ready for me because you know I sit here until 4 o'clock without even eating my first meal of the day. Shame on you. <laughs> um, on a good note, I've lost like, 30 pounds in the last three months, so woohoo! Um, crap, what was my train of thought? What, what did you say before that? Oh, the link. Oh, the link to the article. It, anybody who saw the article that basically said that our legislature did, did us a big fat favor by voting in favor of this because it stops the bad guys from requiring these uh, microchips or whatever, that article I would love if somebody could find it and send it to me. Um, if it's done in the next one minute, um, we'll see it. Uh, hopefully my team will see it and they'll find that link and, and send it to me. Otherwise, um, if it's after I've signed off the video, uh, please um, send it to me uh, by email. Um, oh, I'm seeing your comments. <laughs> Micah Young said, Catherine just got off the phone with Rep Bellino. I'm going to get clarification. I've been told that they had a ton of bills put in front of them all at once. Most reps are spending much of their time working on the unemployment debacle. Okay. Guys, this is to my friends, my conservative friends. I kind of want to say your names, but I also don't want to call you out because I really want you to not be mad. I want you to not get defensive. I want you to start focusing on getting back to doing the right thing. So you know who you are, right? My state rep friends, especially my conservative state rep friends. Wait a minute. Whitset didn't vote on it. There were three no votes. Right. There were three abstains. Right? Did I read that right? There were three, but they didn't list the names of who. Is saying. Karen Whitset's name on the list? I don't recall reading it out loud. Not. Huh. I knew, I knew that there's at least one that I there's knew three. should be on there. Well, I know there are three, but I knew that I would at least know who one of them is. Anyway. It doesn't list which ones didn't vote in favor or against it. It just says there's three that were absent. So Karen Whitsett did not vote in favor of this. Thank you, Karen. 
Um, if you are one of my state rep friends or state rep enemies, I guess, who voted in favor of this bill and where was I going with that? I have no idea. What was I starting to say? Um, oh, oh, it was your comment about, okay. If you voted in favor of this bill, because as I was just told, um, some state reps are telling people when they call very angry about this bill, some of the excuses we're getting is um, that you guys were given a whole stack of bills to vote on at once. It's overwhelming. You can't read them all. I'm going to ask you, number one, vote no, or number two, um, don't vote on it. One of the two, whichever in that certain situation you deem is most appropriate, but um, never vote based on the wording of the summary of the bill alone. That's why on my website for the Restore Freedom Initiative, I have this whole constitutional um, amendment petition. I don't just give people the front page with the 100 word summary. I didn't just put the 100 word summary on the website. The whole petition is there for everyone to see and to read. And I've been answering questions based on the actual wording of the language because the summary really doesn't mean a whole lot of anything. I could be wrong, but I don't ever recall seeing any court anywhere referencing the summary or the description at the top as part of the um, authority to do or not do something in any kind of case at all. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but. It is essentially the thing that's just going to tell you what the topic is about, but it certainly shouldn't be misleading. In fact, we should find out who wrote this? Which individual actually wrote, not, not which legislators um, it. introduced the bill, which human being physically typed this up and thought it was a good idea? I'm assuming it was legislative council, but I would like to know which individual did this because this is extremely misleading. And again, another reason why unelected individuals should never have any kind of say or influence in this kind of regard in writing bills, in making decisions um, in a judicial capacity, in doing any kind of investigation or prosecution, which would be the executive capacity, if you're not elected, that's not your job. Regardless of whatever state law might be out there that says to the contrary, we have a Republican form of government in the U.S. Constitution, Article 4, Section 4, that says we are guaranteed a Republican form of government, even down here at the state level. And that means we the people hold the power and we elect individuals into government to serve in those capacities to protect our constitutional rights. That's the purpose of government. So if we did not elect you into that position, you have no right to serve in a legislative, executive, or judicial capacity to rule us in any way. You should not be drafting language of bills if we did not elect you to that position. Our current constitution says that's how it happens. So that's why we need to get this constitutional amendment on the ballot for November 3rd, 2020. So back to those of you who voted in favor of this, if you felt entirely overwhelmed and you trusted the summary, you trusted legislative council, you trusted your fellow legislators or whomever to um, give you the, the correct synopsis of this, I'm gonna ask number one, that you own it. And number two, that you help us to make it right. 
you help us to make sure this bill dies in Senate committee, that it never hits the floor for vote, and that we can find a way to work together so that this kind of garbage doesn't happen again. Because I know at least a handful of you that voted in favor of this bill, I really believe your heart is to protect the constitutional rights of the people here in Michigan. I really, I'm honestly surprised at how many names I read that voted in favor of this. So I'm asking you to join in with us to correct this. And I know your job is overwhelming. I'm going to tell you that my unpaid job in doing all this is overwhelming. I'm starving. I haven't eaten a meal yet today. I haven't gotten to do anything fun. I haven't sat out in the sunshine or put my feet up. I don't sleep any more than four hours any given night, except for that one I had six hours. That was like a week ago. I'm going to be working on my birthday inside, going over stuff with the petition or answering questions or dealing with whatever newest bill that was passed through the House or the Senate that I need to address and answer questions on. I'm not even getting paid to do this. I mean, there are some people that send in donations, and it is appreciated. There's a link on my Facebook page and on my website. But I don't get paid to do this. I'm certainly not making the, you know, $79,000 a year plus benefits and all kinds of mileage and other stuff. I'm doing this as a donation of my time because it's the right thing to do. And my husband does not make any more money than any of your spouses do. I can guarantee you that. When we make such little money that we qualify for free and reduced lunch, I know that we don't make more money than you as a state rep. So I'm asking you to understand we can work on this together. We can work on this together. We can find a way to find solutions. But you have to own when you make a vote on a yes vote on a bill like this. Uh, somebody posted a link. Apparently, Michigan's vaccine choice is in favor of the bill. Did you see that yourself? Can I see that? I want to see the actual, is it the link? Is it on Michigan Vaccine Choice's website? Michigan for Vaccine Choice posted this with a picture on the front page of the bill. Some good news to share. A bill to prevent... Okay, but did, can I... Is it actually on their website that you're looking at? I'll pull it up for you. Carol Moore, if you're watching this. Connie Johnson, if you're watching this. Um, I can't think of any other... I, All of you who know me, please call me about this bill. Maya... Please call me. I don't. Is it, so? It wasn't the website you were looking at directly. The link that it said they had a picture on it, so it might have come down already. It's not on the front page anymore. Is it? Do they have a? Can I see? Uh, that's fine. Thank you. I'm looking at a, um, this really should be touch screen. I'm looking at a website of an organization that fights for freedom in a very specific capacity um, that I would think they would be adamantly opposed to this bill. And someone apparently posted a link in the comments that said they were in favor of it. So I'm just trying to see if that is in fact correct. Um, so give me just one second. You're right, Debbie. It's not an excuse. We are taught that we're supposed to read before we sign. That's why when I, anytime I bought any property and I had a mortgage and the documents were this thick and they had a whole crap ton of language in there, I told them they need to send them to me ahead of time if they don't want to sit there and wait for hours because I will read every single word 
on every single page before either myself or my husband is going to sign any of it. We can go on a ride at a theme park, and if there's any kind of waiver or at Sky Zone or whatever, I will read every single word because that's what we should be doing. I don't see. Okay. What number is this? This is 56. 72. I mean, they support, well, I don't know if they support. They have something on their website about 5572. I don't see anything about 5672. Um, I just like to verify my information, guys. So before right. I share any more about what I'm seeing, it is not on here. It has been, if it was on here, it's been removed, thankfully. Um, because I know the website I was just looking at, um, I know that they fight for freedom. Hands down, they fight for freedom. So, um, if it was on there, it is off now, and that's, that's awesome. So, um, are there any last questions? Because this has been a long one. Uh, Micah posted, just talked to another rep, they thought it was a good bill to protect your body from medical privacy and the excuse of unemployment. Guys, if you're a state rep and you've been busy with unemployment, then maybe, number one, you should not have allowed the state of emergency to continue in the first place on April 7th when you guys voted in favor of it. Also, maybe, at the very least, let's pretend it's all constitutional, maybe you guys should say, you know what? Publicly say, after April 30th, the governor had literally no statutory authority to continue the state of emergency. Therefore, all of her executive orders, based upon the emergency powers, are gone, null and void, and everyone can go about their lives. Don't tell people they have to follow the executive orders when they're illegal. Certainly, point number three, don't tell people they have to follow the executive orders when they're blatantly unconstitutional. So the Constitution itself tells us that if there is a law that goes against the Constitution, the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. So that law is nothing. And then you can look at something as, as famous as a Marbury versus Madison case that says any law that contravenes or contradicts the Constitution is void on its face. There's a whole plethora of cases on point that completely explain this concept that it's as though no law was ever made in the first place. It's as though no executive order ever existed in the first place when it's unconstitutional. If you are wondering which cases I'm talking about, you can go to my website. Which website do I have it? I have it posted on, um, I'll eventually get it posted on my main K. Henry 4 mi law firm website, but right now it's posted on RestoreFreedomMI.com. You can see, I believe it's on the main page, scroll to the bottom, and it has the list of the um, most recent brief I filed with the Michigan Supreme Court in the legislature's case against the governor, as well as the motion and the um, brief, amicus brief that I have filed with the Court of Appeals in the legislature's case against the governor, and I go through all of that. All of that in specifics. And if any of you have any questions on it whatsoever, I don't care if we're normally on the same side of issues. I don't care if uh, you voted no, uh, yes on this. If you have a question and you want to further understand those concepts, you can reach out to me. Absolutely. My phone number is 616-303-0183. You can text me. I would be glad to go over these with you. So don't say now that you're so overwhelmed in dealing with unemployment insurance crap that you can't read the bills before you vote on them, so therefore you're going to vote yes based on the summary or what you've been told. You guys are the ones that clearly could have put the brakes on this whole illegal executive order crap in the first place, but you chose not to do that. 
most of you are still choosing not to publicly even say that it's unconstitutional what she's doing with these executive orders. Executive orders are not there to govern the people. Executive orders especially in our state constitution, are only allowed under Article 5, Section 2 of our state constitution. And basically what it boils down to is that the governor can do an executive order to reorganize parts of the executive branch. And then she has to give you guys notice so that you have, it's either 60 or 90 days to decide whether or not you're going to, um, what's that word? Not deny, um, veto uh, that decision. So, I mean, look at the executive orders that she's issued. Ooh, um, I want to say maybe 104, 107. Um, there's executive orders. There were at least two that she's issued so far this year that I want to say are at least after 99. And they were not anything to do with COVID-19. They are specifically about reorganizing parts of the executive branch. And if you read the order itself, it says that it doesn't become effective until a particular um, point in time. Because that, um, that gives you that time under Article 5, Section 2 of the state constitution as legislators. That gives you the time to research it. Uh, think about it and make a decision as to whether you guys want to, as a legislative body, vote to essentially turn down the proposal being made by the governor in that case. Read Anna's One second. Comment. So just to reiterate this then, well, that's creepy. I don't like to see myself. Guys, I don't even like to do these Facebook Live videos. I don't like being on camera. I'm not photogenic. I had to go get my driver's license picture done the other day and... I just, ugh. anyway, so don't show me myself. I don't want to see my face. Anyway, but one second on that. So my point in talking to you about these executive orders, at least the two that I know she's done in the last month, where she's reorganizing um, a portion of the executive branch with a commission, a commission or a committee or, or something of that nature. I don't remember specifically what they were. Um, you guys still have the opportunity to say no to that. What we're talking about is executive orders where there's no oversight. I don't care if it was for 28 days or 14 days or one day. I don't care if it's for one hour. I don't care if it's for one minute. The governor does not have that authority. And no governor and no legislator and no judge, no public official whatsoever ever has authority to act in a way uh, to exercise you know, governmental authority unless it has been specifically given to them in our U.S. or state constitutions. If they have not been specifically given the power to do so in our U.S. or state constitutions, that means we the people have retained that power. And I don't care what a state statute says. A state statute cannot give power to any government official that violates the restrictions purposely placed upon our government in our U.S. or state constitutions. So please read that. If you're a state rep, read the briefs I submitted and ask me questions if you want. Have a debate with me in public if you want. Let's do it. That's fine. Which section? So is it Anna? Yep. Anna Vanderheide, can you please reach back out to Michelle and ask her specifically which language is coming out of the bill before it's going to be voted on in the Senate and sent back to the House? Because supposedly, for everyone else, supposedly um, Michelle Hotenga has said that the Senate is planning on taking out some of the bad language. Um, I don't know that that's what her quotes. It's like the telephone game. So I don't know exactly what Michelle Hotenga's words were. But I would, I would be curious to know exactly what language is being stricken from this bill um, before it's voted on in the Senate. 
because it better not just be um, line 20 on page 2 line 25 through page uh, 3 line 1 that obviously needs to come out but quite frankly um, we need to remember that the actual damages is not sufficient it should say actual and punitive and statutory damages all of the above so I would like clarification from any of you state reps that are currently watching I would like clarification on whether you guys are going to foresee that the Senate is going to correct that part of it as well and add that it's actual punitive and statutory damages that will be allowed for a person who is being forced to inject something into their body simply to keep their job to feed their families question and the person who talked about michigan for vaccine choice found the post and posted the link and it is on their facebook what Oh. Hmm. Is it still on their page? Yep, that's live. That's not a screenshot. I clicked on the link live. Oh. Hey, Michigan for Vaccine Choice friends. Please reach out to me. Please reach out to me on this, House Bill 5672. I would have definitely called you guys if I would have realized this before I went on this, um, this link. Um, so any of, my, any of my Michigan Vaccine Choice friends, uh, especially those on the board, please reach out to me on this. Um, I can't imagine a single one of you would be okay with this. So I'd like to answer questions, get, you know, get to a point of clarity, whatever needs to happen, because I, I, I cannot imagine that any one of you actually support this. Uh, where did the question go? It's a question I want to know, too. Can we, the citizens, have her, uh, Governor Whitmer arrested? Say that again? Can we, the citizens, have Governor Whitmer arrested? That's a whole other video, guys. Uh, here's a compliment. You are a gorgeous lady, and those brains are phenomenal. Who said that? Nikki Darling. Well, thank you, Nikki. I appreciate that. Mike, if you're still watching, you could say things like that. <laughs> Lisa says, your sugar is low. Please eat soon. It, it probably is low, because my lunch is sitting over there. It was a salad sounds healthy it's not as healthy on the floor but um oh yeah Nicole if you can I don't know if anybody else is watching um from MVC so if you can text them ask them to call me oh, oh you know what I put it on silent so maybe they are trying to get a hold of me um shoot so, is it possible to have a, a reg, reg, roll call vote changed after the fact? Can people who didn't vote say they voted for it and have that changed? What? No. Uh, Diana Dino just said, just talked to my rep and he said House Bill 5672 was voted out 106 to 2. No. Okay. No. <laughs> if you're a state rep, and who was the state rep? They didn't say. If you're a state rep and you think that a bill that was voted on 104 voting in favor, two voting against, and three not voting on it at all is the same thing as saying 106 voted in favor to two voting against. I just asked her which rep I'll tell you about. I'd be really curious what's going through your brain when you say that. Somebody made a comment.
Illinois legislature won't take the time to stand up to the governor. The legislature damn well better take the time to stand up to the governor. They took the same oath that I did, that every police officer did, to swear to uphold the U.S. and Michigan constitutions. NBC conservative voter voice for this. Say that again. Uh, maybe NBC Michigan Vaccine yep. Choice conservative voter voice for this. Well, that's kind of what I was getting at is a database that's like, um, you know, Americans for Prosperity or Michigan Vaccine Choice, like almost every um, major organization that watches legislation uh, in our state has a like a voter voice um, push to contacting your state reps and your state legislators, your state senators on particular bills so that you can, it's more organized and it's easier for you to know exactly who to contact and how to word it um, and remember what bill it is and everything like that. And so, I'm curious, uh, maybe I shouldn't even ask. I just see, Teresa, you said something about MVC didn't vote on this. They're an organization, not legislators. I guess I would assume that they would vote as to which bills they're in favor of supporting, but maybe, I don't know. Um, I guess that was my assumption. But certainly they're not one of the 104 individuals who voted in favor of this. We're up to 142 executive orders. Oh, are you serious? I hope whoever wrote that is wrong. I'm going to double check that myself. 142. That can't be. That can't be. 142. Well, in the last week. Mm, that cannot be. I just submitted a brief to the Court of Appeals, and I want to say there was only a 131. Oh. You're wrong, Carolyn. It's actually 143. 143 executive orders issued by our governor in the year 2020, and we're not, oh, we are halfway done. Holy cow. Wow. 143 executive orders that are entirely in, unconstitutional on their face let alone the fact that they do all those other things that we've talked about that makes them unconstitutional. They have more than one subject matter that makes them unconstitutional. They um, abrogate or change uh, a state statute without totally reprinting the whole thing. They go into effect um, without a, a supermajority vote of the legislature without waiting the 90 days before enforcement. You know, a wide variety of things besides the fact that a governor is not actually given legislative authority in the first place, but wow, 143. That's insane. Is there anything else I need to address? You don't see any other questions? New executive order closing indoor bars. That was number 143. Uh, they would like to see, somebody would like the information sent to Tucker Carlson for tonight's news. I've tried to send stuff to Tucker Carlson, so I don't know. I'm not cool enough for him, I guess. I would love to go and share. Well, I don't really want to go on national TV because I hate being on. Anyway, I would love to expose the truth. I would love to be able to answer questions and give the facts and share with people all across the country what is going on here. So, at any rate, um... I'm assuming based on what we're seeing here. Oh, is there another question? Somebody said, conversation's mute. It was voted out 106 to 2. The conversation is moot. This conversation is mute. Mute. They wrote M-U-T-E? Mm-hmm. The it conversation is M-U-T-E. It has no sound. It was voted out 106 to 2? I think they meant moot. Uh, but it was voted, and she's confirming, or Michelle is saying it was voted out 106 to 2. But we have the House Journal, so. Who? Michelle Gooding, give it. 
So it, the conversation isn't moot because, certainly not mute, but it's not moot because it's a bill that can still be stopped in the Senate, hence the two hours of my life that I'll never give back because I'm talking about this very bill to help shed light on this in time to save our bodily integrity and, I don't know, have everyone pay attention to what's guaranteed to us in the U.S. and Michigan constitutions. Um, so it sounds like those are, um, okay. If I've missed any questions, I'm sorry. I'm trying to scan through one more time. There's at least two of us trying to read through the questions here, but, um, I will, um, if any of you want to share this video or share any of my stuff, with any of the networks, go for it. Um, you can give them my phone number. Um, you can also tell them they can call or text 616-303-0093. I'd be happy to answer. Um, so, um, um Carolyn, I'm assuming you're laughing because um, she's issued another one. <laughs> oh, it's shocking. You, you, you look away for five seconds and she's probably issued 10 more executive orders. Anyway, um, please do continue to ask the questions. Please do reach out to your legislators. Legislators, to those of you who are watching now and are watching in the future, please know, I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican, I will gladly answer questions if you feel like the language of a bill, you have any kind of question, comment, concern, you want to make sure you are doing the right thing before you vote on it, call me, text me, come see me, we'll talk about it. I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. If you're a human being and you're going to be making decisions that affect my life and the life of my children and my mom and my grandma and my dad and my brothers and my sisters and everybody else that I have here in Michigan that I care about, please do not hesitate to reach out. I will gladly answer questions. I'm not even going to charge you. Please. What? Please make sure you're taking the time to read the bills, too. Can I get an email for, for Catherine? And can you put this on YouTube? We do try to put all of these on YouTube. Um, my husband is maybe still watching this. And um, Mike, if you're watching this, that means that whole like spreadsheet where we keep track of which videos we post on which sites and whatnot, that's super important. Uh, please make sure that this video does get downloaded and does get put on the YouTube uh, channel today. Um, I actually have two YouTube channels, but... And then they want your email address. My email address uh, for, it depends, honestly, it depends on which, for which purpose, because I have been totally inundated with stuff, um, obviously, with related to the um, constitutional amendment that I'm working on, as well as the general legal concepts that are all coming um, to our attention with regard to the COVID-19 response from employers and government agencies, et cetera. Um, I have the typical kinds of emails that I would get, so it depends on what the purpose of the email is for. Um, but please know that when I get flooded with hundreds of emails, it does slow my response time down quite a bit. So if it's something that somebody that's working here in my office uh, might be able to help us with, uh, especially if it's related to anything of this COVID-19 nature with the petition or anything like that, um, the best email would be restore freedom mi at gmail.com restore freedom mi at gmail.com otherwise if it's uh, an email that you think only I would be able to answer please give me grace because I answer emails calls and texts 20 hours a day um, so sometimes it takes me a little bit long to get back to people but it is um, that email is the letter K Henry for mi at gmail.com and I think Frank's going to type it in as a comment right here. Can you type both of those emails? Mm -hmm. um, so 
uh, please um, don't hesitate to reach out, uh, but do give me grace for the amount of time it might take. Obviously, if the question is quicker in nature, if there's nothing uh, you know too complicated about how I might have to answer, then I can definitely provide a quicker answer. Um, and quick, quick questions that are sent by text message to me or even you get an even faster response. So thanks everyone. I really hope you have a wonderful week and um, fight the good fight, lady. God bless you. I will continue to fight the good fight and God bless you as well. Thanks everyone.